This is the headliner where we discuss the important issues in hip hop. Following in the hollowed footsteps of jazz and rock and roll, hip hop has now become the music of America. From the suburbs to the inner city, hip hop has been the high selling genre of music for almost 10 years. Moving from the streets to the Smithsonian, that's right, we're in the museum. From spinning game to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, hip hop has become the voice of the people and you have to follow it whether you like it or not. Some might argue that this was Dr. King's dream, to have all races listening to the same music together, living in perfect harmony. But has this occurred? Ari, what is your opinion on this issue? I don't think it's really done that. I think hip hop has uh, created awareness for other groups, namely the African American community, which has started hip hop pretty much. We have awareness of it, but you're talking about equality and perfect harmony. Mm -hmm. I think we're far off from that. Okay. I mean, what what is it going to take to move that? You know, please now take this. I mean, what's it going to take for us to move towards Dr. King's dream of having racial harmony? It's going to take more than hip hop. It's going to take more than a music, just a music form. It's going to take more than that. I mean, we have so many other issues to deal with before we can say, oh, this one thing, this one art form is going to unify us. What about the hundred other things that are happening? You know, the, the difference in communities, the difference in uh, even economics comes into it also. Education. Mm -hmm. Education also. But I believe it's a step yeah. because when you think about it, sports was a step. You know, when Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier, that was a big deal. And then you bring in music as well. You know, you have, like you said, white people starting to hear about black culture. And I think that's important. That's an important step in sort of helping to eradicate racism. Okay. I mean, what what do you feel? I talked about jazz. I talked about rock and roll. What is, has hip hop done anything different than what jazz and rock and roll have done? Because jazz and rock and roll sort of came up in sort of the African-American experience and sort of grew into a worldwide phenomenon. What makes hip hop different than these two? I think the major, the major factor is that jazz and rock and roll, I mean, while there were lyrics in rock and roll and so, some jazz songs, like hip hop really brought sort of the poetry into it. And you can say a lot more with, with hip hop and you know, like a three minute hip hop song than, than the, like sort of the, the uh, restrictions of jazz would allow you. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can, you can tell your life story in, in, in a three minute song, uh, in a three minute rap. And I also think that those other music forms you talked about were also the voice of the youth at the time also, rock and roll and jazz, because it was improvis improvisation and all types of different uh, things that you can implement into the music form. So right. what we're doing is taking, in our generation, this hip hop that we're, that we're focusing on and using as our voice versus back then it was jazz or rock and roll. So I'd say it's pretty similar. It's pretty, it's pretty similar. I mean, has hip hop made further strides in jazz and rock and roll? Definitely, because what hip hop has done is taken the next step because all the parents who heard rock and roll said it was too more, too risque compared to jazz. Now all the parents who grew up on rock and roll is saying the same thing about hip hop. It's pushing the boundary further and further and it's showing you more and more of what's actually happening. It's not sort of sugarcoating it in a nice sweet sounding tune. Okay, well I know I know one panelist said that it wasn't really pushing the boundaries. We sort of got the same boundaries. I mean, do you I mean, what do you say what do you say to that? I mean, if you look at what NWA did, you know, they had Congress up in arms about, you know, talking about killing the police, about talking about arming black youth. Whereas, you know, you don't really hear too much about the history about rock and roll and stuff really doing that. You know, they coincided with the civil rights movement, but hip hop, what hip hop originally tried to do was sort of start a new movement to say, hey, things are better, but they're not where they need to be. And they threw that in America's yeah. face. Okay, but does hip hop have that responsibility? Is it hip hop's responsibility to usher in these grand movements where we're bringing, you know, of integration and those type of things. Is, is that hip hop's responsibility? No way. No way. No. As you said, it's a step, but definitely not main responsibility. You think we can do that? Take on all that burden in a music form, something that can be bought and sold? I don't think so. Well, well hey, I, I mean, mean I, know, I know you're not, not, you're not going in the right direction when uh, you grew up in this, like, let's say you grew up in Dallas and in, in like the, the poor parts of Dallas. And the only thing you're singing about is your 23 inch rims. You know what I'm saying? Like you're not you're you're taking a, the exact opposite direction. Uh, I, I do I believe in that in that circumstance where you grow up dirty poor and all of a sudden you get a lot. You have a responsibility to talk about things that matter, the things that affected you, the things that made you want to get out of that particular lifestyle. Yeah, I you mean know? I mean who else is going to talk about? It? I mean I mean honestly yeah. Congress is not doing it. I mean we've had ghettos in this country. I don't even know how long. They still haven't fixed that. I mean. You know, maybe hip hop's not the answer, but what is? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's not. It's, it's not hip hop's responsibility. It's an opportunity. I mean, it's it's the artist's choice all the time. If they want to talk about something important to them, about police brutality, about growing up, about just chilling with your boys, you do it. 
That's what you want to do. That's what you're going to do. You're an artist. You right. have no obligations. Okay. Okay. I mean, not to focus on on necessarily Dr. King because there were other people, Malcolm X, the Civil Rights Movement, that's definitely respected in the hip hop circles. That's where a lot of Public Enemy got their stuff from. I mean, do you see this? You know, let's not take Dr. King. Do you see as hip hop is living up to Malcolm X's dream? When it started out, you know, when it started out with a Public Enemy, with N.W.A., with Early Outcast, they were saying, look. We don't care about censorship. We don't care about sugarcoating it for radio. Here's what's going on. We're telling it like it is. Don't tell us to cut out words that are being used in our neighborhoods to clean it up for radio, because that's a lie. That's not really what's happening. Mm -hmm. I mean, is, is hip hop, I mean, as we sort of seen hip hop has evolved in the 21st century, moved away from sort of the political aspects, at least commercially. And, you know, does hip hop have the potential now, the way it is right now, to bridge the gap to to bring about the civil rights change that sort of started in the 60s does it have that potential anymore because a lot of people might look at the radio and say forget it it's over it's done yeah, yeah. yeah i definitely think we lost that fire that we had especially late 80s early 90s i mean we definitely had an afrocentric movement going on in hip-hop music and also more political feel to it i mean underground wise we definitely have political movement going on a little bit of afrocentricity going on there but mainstream no there's nothing there's nothing that even encourages me to think that we can move in a direction like that where we can try to bring things back to how they used to be. Well, two Hold words. On. What about Kanye West? Kanye West, if hip hop didn't matter, Kanye West made one comment on a telethon. George Bush doesn't care about black people. Very All true. of a sudden, he was everywhere. If hip hop didn't matter, he he right now is the face of hip hop. If it didn't matter, why would people care about but that I comment? Didn't, I didn't say I didn't say that specifically. I said that hip hop in general. Kanye West, he came with that one comment. Great, but he's a minstrel show. He's a trick. You know, he's doing exactly what oh, they whoa, want. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. That's right. That's right. One and one artist out of how many? How many artists are out there? Kanye West said, you know, he's just one piece of a huge pie. And how much Kanye West is on the radio influencing people? Not much. Versus versus everybody talking about twenty four inch rims and something at work on the corner. You only hear one Kanye song in in ten hours of radio. You see what I'm saying? That's, that's very yeah, true. true. What, what, are the, what are the two of you? Look at you guys sitting here kind of quiet, so I'm, I'm trying to interject. I want to get y'all involved. Yeah. Stumble. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, this is a very important question because, I mean, we're living it right now. Yeah. You know, Chuck D. Sad to say, his influence is sort of past him. Now, I love Chuck D. I love, you know, exactly what Chuck D represents. Ignore that. That's okay. We're going to keep going because Chuck D is very it's important. Really you see what I'm saying? Yeah. But Chuck yeah. D has passed his time. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, and I love Chuck D. But we need new artists now. I mean, is it going to come? And who is it going to come from? Do you see I mean, any hope? No, I mean, because look, it's not just about hip hop. Our music uh, across the board is being broken down into market segments. It's more about finding the product that can sell the most merch across the different segments. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to get that when you're talking about suffering and when you're talking about pain, uh, unless it's, you know, the pain of a cop, you know? <laughs> I think it is possible, but I think it's the responsibility of the consumer to go and buy the records that are talking about it. David Banner was talking about this when he first came out. UGK was talking about it when he first came out. But in order to get noticed, UGK had to go with Jay-Z and do Big Pimpin'. David sure. Banner had to do a song with, with Mr. Collie Park to get to get noticed. No, he did like a pimp. Yeah, I yes, mean, you got to be a pimp to be. Yeah, apparently, you know yeah. apparently, to get your message heard, you have to sell out first, and then maybe they might let you bring some something interesting, something real yeah. to the uh, to yeah. the forefront. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that I think it's really the taste of the American consumer, kind of like what Craig was saying here. It's uh, maybe back in the day when hip hop was just getting around, maybe in the 80s, early 90s, it was more about political messages, and that would be selling. That would be a big that'd be a big hit. Right now, people want to see booties. Okay. People want to see the girls. They I want to be dancing in the club. Yeah, people always, want, people always want to see the booties, but maybe they didn't want to buy it back then. That wasn't on the radio. Okay, okay. Now I'm just gonna do a quick question. Now we talk about the future. Now mm -hmm. here's my question to you: Yes or no? Has hip hop helped race relations? Has it made has hip hop made race relations in America any better? Craig? Right? Yes. Ari? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So now, you know, we sort of established sort of a unanimous decision, you know what I'm saying, to use the boxing term is that, yeah. you know, while we definitely have a way to go, it's not going to solve the whole race problem, but has it bridged the gap a little bit? Mm -hmm. Yes. And we got to look at it as positive. We got to, you know, take that thing and keep it moving. Um, actually, to, to expand a little deeper on this issue, uh, we're going to move into the cosine section where I'm going to ask these fellas. Uh, their opinion on issues and 
the rest of the panel is going to disagree or agree with whoever I choose. So jumping into the first issue.